Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video we will be learning about the basal ganglia. Now before we learn about the basal ganglia in detail, let's look at some of the basics. We all know the structure of the neuron, that is here is the cell body, the nucleus, the axon, myelin sheath and the axon terminal. Now if you look at the cell body, collection of cell bodies is termed to be the grey matter, it forms the grey matter. Now the collection of cell bodies in the central nervous system is known as the nuclei and the collection of cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system is termed as the ganglia. Now the structure that we are learning in this video that is a basal ganglia is actually a structure of the central nervous system. So instead of basal ganglia we should be using the term basal nuclei. So in the video, I will be using the correct term that is the basal nuclei. Now let's learn about the basal nuclei. Now this diagram shows a lateral view of the structures inside the cerebrum. Here we have the lateral ventricle and this shows the parts of the basal nuclei. Here is the thalamus and here are the fibers of the corona radiata and the internal capsule. Now what is basal nuclei? Basal nuclei are subcortical intracerebral masses of grey matter forming important parts of the extrapyramidal system. Now what do you mean by subcortical? It means it lies under the cerebral cortex, that is at the base of it. Intracerebral means it is inside the cerebrum. Masses of grey matter that forms parts of the extrapyramidal system. Now here is a picture showing the parts of the basal nuclei as well as the thalamus. So let's learn about the parts of the basal nuclei. It is composed of three parts. First is corpus striatum, second is the amygdaloid body and third is the claustrum. So first we look at the corpus striatum. The corpus striatum is divided by the internal capsule into two nuclei. First is the lentiform nucleus that you see right here and the caudate nucleus right here. So the caudate and the lentiform nucleus together form the corpus striatum. Now these two nuclei are interconnected by few bands of grey matter below the anterior limb of the internal capsule and these bands give it a striped appearance as you can see right here and that is how the name corpus striatum comes into effect. Now in this picture you can see the horizontal section through the corpus striatum, the internal capsule which is a white structure here as well as the thalamus. So this is showing the horizontal section. So here you can see the two parts of the corpus striatum that is the caudate nucleus and the lentiform nucleus. Now the lentiform nucleus is divided into a lateral part and a medial part. The lateral part is called the putamen as you can see right here. The medial part is called the globus pallidus and the caudate nucleus and the putamen are together known as the striatum, whereas the globus pallidus right here is called the pallidum. Now let's concise the features that we learned till now. The basal nuclei are subcortical intracerebral masses of grey matter. It forms important parts of the extrapyramidal system. It includes three parts that is the corpus striatum, the amygdaloid body and the claustrum. The corpus striatum is partially divided by the internal capsule into the caudate nucleus and the lentiform nucleus and the two, two nuclei are interconnected by few bands of grey matter below the anterior limb of the internal capsule. Now the bands give it a striped appearance. The lentiform nucleus is divided into a lateral part that is a putamen and a medial part which is called the globus pallidus. And finally we have the two parts that is amygdaloid body and claustrum apart from that. Now let's learn about the corpus striatum in detail. We had already learned that the corpus striatum comprises of the caudate nucleus and lentiform nucleus. Now in this diagram we can look at the caudate nucleus and we will be learning about it in detail. So the caudate nucleus is a C shaped or comma shaped nucleus which is surrounded by the lateral ventricle as you can see right here. The concavity of this C encloses the thalamus and the internal capsule. These are the fibers of the internal capsule right here that you can see. The caudate nucleus has three parts, a head, body and tail. Now let's look at each of it in detail. Firstly, the head of the caudate nucleus forms the floor of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. As you can see right here, this is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. 
Now in this horizontal section, you can see that here is the head of the chordate nucleus. This is the medial aspect and here is the lateral aspect. Now the head of the chordate nucleus forms the medial wall of the anterior limb of the internal capsule. I had told you earlier that this is the internal capsule. This is its anterior limb, anterior limb of the internal capsule. Here is the posterior limb of the internal capsule. So the head of the chordate nucleus forms the medial wall of the anterior limb of the internal capsule. Now there are bands of grey matter that connect the head of the chordate nucleus to the putamen across the anterior limb of the internal capsule near the anterior perforated substance right here. Next let's look at the features of the body of the chordate nucleus. Now the body forms the floor of the central part of the lateral ventricle as you can see right here. And it lies medial to the posterior limb of the internal capsule. It is separated from the thalamus by the thalamostriate vein and the striat terminalis. And finally, it is related superiorly to the fronto-occipital bundle as well as the corpus callosum. Next, let's learn about the tail of the chordate nucleus. It forms the roof of the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. Here you can see the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle and the tail of the chordate nucleus forms its roof. And it ends by joining the amygdaloid body as you can see right here. Next, let's look at its relations. Imagine we are looking at it from a superior view. This is the tail of the corpus triatum and in front of it is the amygdaloid body. So medially it is related to the stria terminalis. Laterally it is related to the tapetum. And superiorly it is related to the sublentiform part of the internal capsule as well as the globus pallidus. Concising the points that we learned under corpus triatum, it comprises of the chordate nucleus and the lentiform nucleus. The chordate nucleus is a C-shaped or comma-shaped nucleus which is surrounded by the lateral ventricle. The concavity of the C encloses the thalamus and internal capsule. The nucleus has a head, a body and a tail. The head forms the floor of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle, the medial wall of the anterior limb of the internal capsule and bands of grey matter connected to the putamen across the anterior limb of the internal capsule near the anterior perforated substance. Next we have the body of the chordate nucleus that forms the floor of the central part of the lateral ventricle. It lies medial to the posterior limb of the internal capsule and it is separated from the thalamus by the stria terminalis and thalamostriate vein. Superiorly, it is related to the fronto-occipital bundle and the corpus callosum. The tail forms the roof of the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. It ends by joining the amygdaloid body at the temporal lobe and it is related medially to the stria terminalis, laterally to the tapetum and superiorly to two structures that is the sublentiform part of the internal capsule and the globus. After having learnt about the chordate nucleus, let's learn about the lentiform nucleus. Now this lentiform nucleus is a large lens shaped nucleus it is biconvex that is convex on both sides and it forms the lateral boundary of the internal capsule we know that this is the internal capsule and it forms the lateral boundary of the internal capsule now the lentiform nucleus has three surfaces first is the lateral surface the medial surface and an inferior surface so first let's look at the lateral surface the lateral surface is convex it is related to the external capsule as you see right here. It is related to the claustrum, an outermost capsule and an insula and it is grooved by the lateral striate arteries. Next we have the medial surface which is more convex than the lateral surface. It is related to the internal capsule, the chordate nucleus and the thalamus. Next is the inferior surface of the lentiform nucleus which is related to the sublentiform part of the internal capsule which separates it from the optic tract, the tail of the chordate nucleus and the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. The inferior surface of the lentiform nucleus is related to the sublentiform part of the internal capsule which separates it from the optic tract, the tail of the chordate nucleus and the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle that you see right here. Now the lentiform nucleus is divided into two parts by a thin lamina of white matter. The larger lateral part that you see right here is called the putamen. It is similar to the chordate nucleus but it contains small cells. 
Now the smaller medial part is called the globus pallidus and it is made up of large cells. The putamen was made up of small cells and globus pallidus is made up of large cells. Concising the important points under the lentiform nucleus, it is a lens shaped nucleus forming the lateral boundary of the internal capsule. It lies beneath the insula and the claustrum and it has three surfaces, the lateral surface, medial surface and the inferior surface. Lateral surface is related to the external capsule, the claustrum, the outermost capsule, insula and is ingrooved by the lateral striate arteries. The medial surface is related to the internal capsule, the caudate nucleus and the thalamus and the inferior surface is related to the sublentiform part of the internal capsule which separates it from the optic tract, the tail of the caudate nucleus and the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. Now the lentiform nucleus is divided into two parts by a lamina of white matter that is the putamen which is the largest, larger lateral part and a smaller medial part which is called the globus pallid. Now let's learn about the connections of the corpus striatum. Here you can see the caudate nucleus, here is the lentiform nucleus, the putamen and the globus pallidus. So here the caudate nucleus and the putamen are efferent nuclei, that is they receive fibers from different structures and here is the globus pallidus that is the efferent nucleus which sends information to the cerebral cortex. So first let's look at the connections of the caudate nucleus and the putamen which are the afferent nuclei. So they receive afferents from the cerebral cortex mainly areas 4 and area 6, the thalamus as well as the substantia nigra and they send afferents chiefly to the globus pallidus as well as to the substantia nigra and the thalamus. Next let's look at the connections of the globus pallidus. It receives afferents mainly from the caudate nucleus and the putamen and it has efferents that form three bundles that is the ansa lenticularis that you see right here, the lenticular fasciculus or the fasciculus lenticularis right here as well as the subthalamic fasciculus. Concising the connections in a tabular column, we have the caudate nucleus and the putamen. Its efferents are the cerebral cortex, the thalamus and the substantia nigra and efferents include the globus pallidus, the substantia nigra and the thalamus. For the globus pallidus, we have efferents that is the caudate nucleus and the putamen and efferent fibers from three bundles that is the ansa lenticularis, the fasciculus lenticularis and the subthalamic fasciculus. Now let's learn about the functions of the corpus striatum. It regulates our muscle tone and helps in smoothening voluntary movements. I have included certain emojis that may help you in remembering these points. So it regulates muscle tone, I have included this. It controls automatic associated movements like swinging of our arms during walking. So you can remember this emoji. It controls coordinated movements of different parts of our body for emotional expression. It influences the precentral motor cortex of our brain. It helps our cortex in execution of learned patterns of movement subconsciously and the corpus striatum, the cerebellum and the motor areas of our cerebrum jointly are responsible for planning, execution and control of movements. Finally, let's look at the two other parts that are included in the basal nuclei that is the amygdaloid body and the claustrum. So the amygdaloid body is a nuclear mass in the temporal lobe lying antero superior to the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle right here. It is continuous with the cortex of the uncus and the limen insulae and the anterior perforated substance. Finally, we have the claustrum which is a saucer shaped nucleus situated between the putamen and the insula. Inferiorly, it is thickest and continuous with the anterior perforated substance. Concising the points under the amygdaloid body, it is a nuclear mass in the temporal lobe lying antero superior to the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. It is continuous with the cortex of the uncus, the limen insulae and the anterior perforated substance. We have certain efferent and efferent and efferent fibers to it. Finally, there is the claustrum. It is a saucer shaped nucleus situated between the putamen and the insula. Inferiorly, it is thickest and continuous with the anterior perforated substance. To get the notes of basal ganglia as well as other notes of anatomy, physiology, biomechanics and other health science subjects, visit my website, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.